Hello, Francis Edmonds here. Just want to say a little thank you to um, both the Walrus Talks and to Desjardins for sponsoring this event. So you've heard about the circular economy from Stephanie and I'm going to cover circular procurement. Basically, buying the future we want. In this critical decade of climate action, we need to pull out all of the tools in our toolbox to tackle the climate catastrophe. As a 30 year sustainability practitioner, I've concluded that we need to use the capitalist systems framework to make the change we need, specifically focusing on procurement and buying the future that we all want. Every dollar that we spend both at home and at work sends a signal into the marketplace. HP recently funded some research through Schulich School of Business into how Canadian governments at all levels across the country are integrating this concept into their buying. The research looked at bids over a million dollars in three categories of spend. And despite a commitment from the federal government in the throne speech over 25 years ago to do green procurement, you may be shocked to find that we spend our taxpayers' money, that's 13% of GDP, with virtually no sustainable or circular requirements. Even myself, I find that lure of cheap, upfront, low cost items to be very seductive until I catch myself. If this quote adopted from Ray Anderson says it all, the fastest way to green your organization is to purchase from one that's already green theirs, why are we not using this powerful tool to buy the future we want? And in particular, in a post COVID recovery. We've effectively been seduced to focus on the lowest price as representative of the true value of things. In pushing for that, we have accelerated the linear economy with all its warts, externalities like slave labor, disposable products and burgeoning landfills. Interestingly enough, we have not continued to leverage the dollar as a proxy and look at all the costs as we use and ultimately dispose of the goods we buy. Time to reset our thinking. Total costs, including maintenance, repair, end of life and operating costs need to be counted in. Getting best value overall, which of course includes all of these elements. So here's the definition of circular procurement that I use buying the most circular service or good, and you'll note I flipped those, from the most circular supplier. Both, of the things we are, both for the things that we are buying and who we are buying from are critical in driving the market transformation we need, and often we only focus on the actual good. So this is all a bit theoretical. Let me give you an example. HP has made a commitment to take our entire business circular. This is not just about designing products better, though that's certainly a critical first step, but offering our products as a service. Changing how we provide computing and printing power to our customers, switching to as a service models, requires many changes across the company. Sustainability is a team sport, and now that team also includes you, our customers. Take, for instance, our home ink printers a commoditized product that a typical customer expects to be able to buy for $49.99. You can't make a high quality printer for that price. So the printer gets sold at a loss and companies make up their profits on the ink cartridges that go in them, making them seem high priced, which is a disincentive to use the product, not a smart consumer or business proposition. This is a typical circular economy conundrum, particularly in commoditized marketplaces. <clears throat> Excuse me. How do you break out of a less than desirable market, stay in business and lower your sustainability impact? So HP's come up with a solution and I wish I had thought of this because it's brilliant. It's called HP Instant Ink. It's a subscription service based on how many pages you want to print. It starts with a low cost service. You can buy uh, 50 pages a month for $3.99 a month. If you don't print all of those pages, they carry over to the next month. If you print a few more, you pay a little more or you can go up into a higher plan. It's very flexible. And the really great part about this is you never have to think about ink again. Your printer orders the ink. It gets shipped to you in, a, uh, in less packaging, in bigger cartridges, and with a recycling bag in the box, which is fantastic because we get more cartridges back for recycling. And we put that through our closed loop uh, plastics recycling process, which is based right here in Canada, in Montreal. And of course that helps contribute to our 30%, very aggressive 30% uh, 
post-consumer recycled plastic content across our entire product portfolio by 2025. So we need all the help we can get on that. Instant Inc. is the world's fastest growing business to consumer play in the circular economy and it's growing at double digits. And we anticipate by uh, that uh, this year end, we'll have 8 million subscribers worldwide. So it works. And why is this? Well, it's good for the customer, it's cheaper and more convenient, good for the business with a steady annuity stream, and it's good for the planet as it has reduced materials consumption by 57%, decreased energy use by 86%, and decreased carbon footprint by 84%. This is really showing you that you can hit a very sweet spot leveraging the circular economy, satisfying business and customer and sustainability needs. It's really a, a very good example of how well this can work. But those numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, seem a little unbelievable, right? So we checked our other service-based models using the tool of peer-reviewed life cycle assessments, comparing owning products to accessing the service of them. Even we were surprised to find that the impacts are lower across all of the measured areas. This almost never happens when you're using this tool. You can get the white paper on this, and I've shared the URL with the Walrus team. So to summarize, circular procurement is in my mind the best tool we have to make the changes that we need fast enough to get our emissions down whilst also considering socioeconomic elements. And I'd like to end with this quote. Without circular procurement, your sustainability work will be just seen as window dressing. And that comes from TCL certified. Thank you. <laughs>